This evening on Holy Tuesday, we all know why we're here, and many of us are here to hear this specific hymn of the Hymn of Cassiani. In fact, many times I'd heard through the years that Holy Week, for some, begins on Tuesday evening with this hymn, and this, this hymn of a woman who was sinful and comes to the feet of Christ and with tears and with kisses washes Christ's feet and dries his feet with her hair. The hymn is so much more than just this woman 2,000 years ago. This hymn is a hymn for each and every one of us, is a reminder, is a gift, is an encouragement that no matter where we have been, no matter how dark our lives may have been, that all it takes to change, all it takes to grow, to become closer to Christ, and to change our lives from sin to holiness begins with a simple kiss. And not the kiss of Judas, as we hear in the hymnology, but the kiss of repentance, the tears of repentance. Now, the fathers of the church and the mothers of the church have written over and over throughout the centuries that the, the best way to wash the dirt off our heart, the hardened crust of dirt off our heart, is by simply having tears. Now, not everyone can shed tears over their sins. Some people cry more easily than others. Some have a very difficult time expressing emotion. But what is it that we can do to leave our life of sin and to come to the feet of Christ is by the simple gesture of coming to his feet. The only way you can come to the feet of Christ is to be on your knees. There is no other way that we can approach the foot of another person. In fact, we see this extreme humility in Christ when he washes his disciples' feet. He himself has to stoop down to his disciples to wash their feet. And then we read in the hymnology that, that says, he who stoops not, in other words, God who does not bend for anything, bends down to his creature to be submitted for baptism, to be uh, the one who washes the feet of his disciples. So we see that even Christ in his extreme love comes to our feet to wash us, to cleanse us, not only through baptism, but also his disciples in cleansing their feet and washing them clean so that they can have a part in him. But our responsibility and our calling back is that as we come forward throughout this Holy Week to bend to him, to come to his feet, to worship his feet, to venerate, to kiss, and to sob over his feet, not only to wash them by the only means that we have available, but also to come to wash the sinfulness out of our lives. And to remember that this evening is a reminder to all of us that doesn't matter how bad you've been, how bad your sins have been through the, the year, you are at the point where you hear this message in this evening's entire service that it can be overcome. You can change. You can come into the good graces of God. And never to think for a minute that just because you've fallen away that there is no ability to come back. That is the devil's trick to us and not what God is telling us. That even St. Paul, who was Saul, who was persecuting Christians, who was there at the stoning of the first martyr, St. Stephen the deacon, that even his life, how far off it was, was changed in an instant by Christ. And he became, as we know, one of the most prolific writers in the early church and also the one who we hear his words more in the New Testament than the words of Christ. There are more words of St. Paul 
in the Bible, in the New Testament, than the, from the mouth of Christ. So we see that there is no one that is exempt from forgiveness. The only thing that exempts us from forgiveness is ourselves. God does not do that. God embraces us. He has, as we see on the cross every single Sunday and behind the altar table, his arms outstretched to embrace us. All we have to do is come back to him and embrace him. So this evening is this stark and vivid and bold reminder that no matter what we've done, it can be overcome. So as you come through this Holy Week, ask God to soften your heart, to bring the tears of repentance out if they can come, to bring the sweet kisses out, to venerate the icons and the body of Christ that we will see on Thursday night on the cross in front of us all, to venerate the epitaphio, and to also come to the point of coming for confession and expressing our sins to God, not to the priest, but to God. And in that beautiful sacrament, it is washed away and absolved and remissed, which is a, a, a stronger word than just forgiven. Because we can forgive someone, but remission means the obliteration, the complete destruction and, and disintegration of the sin. So when we say the remission of sins, that means that they're completely gone. They don't exist anymore. And even those sins that we ask for forgiveness for in the sacrament of confession, God himself does not call them to memory. So these are important messages for this evening in this, this beautiful service where we hear this hymn that seems to be the pinnacle of Holy Tuesday evening. But the whole theme for us, again, is to come forward to change and to realize that we are all capable of growing. No matter where we've been, we are here. And from here, all the good things are in front of us. May he continue to bless us and to be with us and to remember that no matter what we've done, we are all capable of change, growth, and ultimately holiness. Amen.